system. So could I invite the other panelists to join me um, on stage and then we'll get started. Great, thanks everybody and good afternoon and welcome back um, for this afternoon panel discussion. Um, we're going to be digging a bit deeper into some country perspectives and also hearing from the UNF C. So my name's Fiona Stringer and I am based here in Rome I'm at FAO in the Forest Monitoring and Data Platforms team on various Aim for Forest activities. Um, so very excited to be here. Um, this morning we heard a lot about um, the three different contexts of national forest monitoring, including forest monitoring for transparent commodity value chains, forest monitoring for MRV, and also this new country-led planning process, which um, is all about how we're institutionalizing uh, national forest monitoring systems. And now we want to really dig into some of the country experiences, country perspectives, um, hear from this excellent panel that we have um, on how we're really getting to sustainable, operational and impactful national forest monitoring systems. So I'm pleased to be joined by such an excellent panel here today. Um, we have Pierre Brenda from the UNFCCC Secretariat. Um, we have Divi Hardy Sosanto from uh, Indonesia's Ministry of Environment and Forestry, um, Alessandro Avellino next to me on Ministry of Environment and Climate Change in Brazil. Um, next to me on this side is Gavi Nunez from the GFOI office, um, and then also Tony Leal and Oscar Palencia from Guatemala as well. Um, so we will have presentations from each of our um, panelists. And then we will great break into questions and answers um, and have a more detailed panel discussion. Um, so really exciting. Um, and yeah, so if you have any questions during the presentations, just write them down and then we'll go into Q&A and have an opportunity for um, questions from the in-room audience. And then we'll also collect some online as well. So without further ado, I will pass to our first presenter, which is Pierre Brenda from the UNFCCC. Thank you very much, Fiona, and very glad to join all of you for these few days of South South Exchange organized by GFOA on FAO. It's really great to be with you. So I'm Pierre Brenda, working in the Agriculture, Forestry, Other Land Use Unit of the UNFCCC Secretariat. We are especially supporting uh, Red Plus uh, assessment and technical analysis. So uh, I have some slides to, to support uh, my discussion, but uh, let me start by saying that I, I would like to I don't know if there is a point of view. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so I would just like to start a bit uh, setting the scene for, for this panel discussion by um, bringing, uh, going back first to the basics, basically regarding the uh, Warsaw uh, framework on Red Plus that was agreed, as mentioned this morning, more than 10 years ago now, and to remind us all of some of the expectation for national forestry monitoring systems in that context. So this is probably known by 
most if not all of you but so red plus uh, in the context of the UNFCCC is a holistic framework to facilitate climate action in the forest sector and under the red plus activities uh, developing country can receive aim and receive result-based payment for emission reductions that have been achieved so uh, in that context, party have set, create, asked us to create a Lima Info Hub for more information about uh, countries that are already eligible to receive result-based payment in that context. And as of now, we have 19 countries who, who have reached that step and uh, bringing result-based payment for a reduction of 11, uh, over 11 gigaton of CO2 equivalent. Uh, now, if we uh, go back to the requirement for uh, being eligible for such result-based payment, so under the Warsaw framework on Red Plus, there are five key components. So, a national Red Plus strategy or action plan, a robust and transparent national forest monitoring system, which is at the heart of these few days of exchange, but also a system for providing information on how safeguards uh, listed in uh, decision 1CP16 are being addressed and respected. Uh, and then two further aspects, so a forest reference emission level that is uh, the subject of a technical assessment, I will come back to this a bit later in this presentation, and a technical annex on red plus results that are also subject to a technical analysis. So now, as this panel is about national forest monitoring system, I thought it could be useful that I come back a bit uh, to some uh, of the specific requirements that were agreed by parties in the context of UNFCCC. So reminding that already in Copenhagen, so in 2009, party agreed that such forest monitoring system use a combination of remote sensing and ground-based forest carbon inventory approaches and that they do so uh, to provide transparent, consistent, as far as possible, uh, estimates and with a strong emphasis on transparency of the results achieved. And so uh, also in decision one, CP16, there is this expectation that when a national uh, monitoring system cannot uh, be set up initially, it's possible to start working with a subnational monitoring and reporting systems as an interim measure. And in this case, uh, there need to be a way to address how displacement of emission is being addressed at the national level. So when the Warsaw framework on Red Plus was itself was adopted, so in 2013, um, party uh, firmed up their expectation for national forest monitoring systems and uh, led this down in decision 11, CP19, uh, regarding the modalities for national forest monitoring systems. So it was decided uh, in particular that the national forest monitoring system should be guided by the most recent IPCC guidance and guidelines as adopted and encouraged by the COP. And uh, as you can see here um, on the screen, a range of specific data requirements were agreed, among other on suitability to track forest carbon stocks and forest area changes. So, um, it was further decided that the forest monitoring system should enable the assessment of different type of forest in the country, including nat natural forests, as defined by the party. Now, we touch a bit upon recent development regarding to Red Plus in the morning session, uh, just coming back to a few of them here. And, uh, 
So rolling back first, so the RAID Plus was agreed under the UNFCCC convention, but it's very much relevant in the specific context of the Paris Agreement as well, and this is recognized by Article 5, Paragraph 2, and later decision under the um, UNFCCC. And so uh, more recently, so one year ago, in, in Dubai, countries, it was highlighted as part of the first global stock take under the Paris Agreement that country efforts to halt and reverse deforestation, forest degradation uh, are key to, to achieve the uh, common goals that parties have set to themselves. And in the context of the next cl national climate plans that are due by February next year, uh, parties are expected to consider enhanced effort for halting and reversing deforestation and forest degradation uh, with a very ambitious uh, target of doing so by 2030. Um, other milestones were touched upon and more recent one of the last few months. Just coming back to the GCF board decision here, uh, noting that uh, the, uh, this policy, so which is opening uh, for further red plus result based payment into the regular project activity cycle of the fund, is fully aligned with the Warsaw framework for red plus, and so that to apply for the funding country need to have the framework referred in Article 5.2 of the Paris Agreement fully in place. Uh, regarding Article 6 uh, of the Paris Agreement and in particular Article 6.4, uh, so the supervisory body adopted standard for methodology and removals uh, in October and there, therein it's clearly indicated the possibility for Red Plus activity under Article 5, Paragraph 2 to be credited under Article 6.4 and also that Red Plus projects um, or uh, implementation at jurisdictional scale need to demonstrate that they are included in national reporting uh, to be captured. So really, this is a strong signal for long-term implementation of National Red Plus. Now, uh, a brief further uh, feedback about technical assessment which of uh, Red Plus reference levels, which is really uh, an, a great opportunity to improve uh, forest reference emission level, forest reference levels, and a unique opportunity to exchange with peers. So I hope some of you will be interested in getting involved. And so in that just... Uh, a, a quick overview of where we are. As of now, we have uh, 63 parties that have uh, submitted a reference, such a reference level uh, for technical assessment. And among the 81 that have finished the cycle, 77 have submitted a modified reference level following the assessment. So just showing that uh, the assessment lead to, to change and adjustment in, in the uh, vol voluntarily by countries. And in 78% of the case, this included a modified reference level. So and getting to more accurate and consistent estimates. So thank you very much for this opportunity to join this panel. And if you are interested in joining technical assessment session as an expert, uh, first step and critical step to do there is please register on the roster of experts. Uh, the system will then contact your national focal point for approval of your self-nomination. Obviously, it's good if you can contact them, uh, get in touch with them as well to follow up. And then you will get both the opportunity to uh, participate in e-training organized by the Secretariat and get those recognized through exams, but also the possibility to be invited to participate in Red Plus Technical Assessment. For more info, just contact me. I will be here throughout the week. Thank you very much, Fiona. And Happy to give close to us. Thanks, Pierre. That's really um, useful to set the scene from an international perspective. And I'm sure there are many experts in this room that could um, really input 
there as well. Um, so now we're going to hear a bit from Indonesia's perspectives um, for a slightly different area on forest monitoring for transparent commodity value chains. So I'll pass to Divi Hadi now. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, all participants. Please introduce myself first. My name is Dwi. I am technical staff in Ministry of Forestry. I will show you how Indonesia forest monitoring system can be used as tool for transparent commodity value chains. Before we start, I have to mention that Indonesia NFMS developer to meet Indonesia on regulation requirement and not to meet any other. We have comment our system for more than 30 years and still improving it to meet our needs and advancing it to match with current technologies. Indonesian forest monitoring that mandate that mandate as forest inventories is part of forest planning that directly state law even the derivated rules and it consistent in consists of national provincial base water shield base and unit management base national forest resource inventory can be divided to remote sensing based forest inventory and field based forest inventory. Remote sensing based forest inventory mainly producer land cover map that pass quality assurance with accuracy and uncertainly calculation. Field based forest inventory is being revised with collaboration of FAO. It will commence in 2025 with hexagonal base sampling. Indonesia forest is unique. We can define it as a landscape-based ecosystem unit occupied by three dominant by natural resorts enclosed in environmental unit, in which one to another is an extra three cable that explain in the law. From that conceptual definition, we detailed it as an area of land spanning more than 0.5 hectare, with three hectare, then five meter at maturity and a canopy for cover of more than 30 percent, or trees able to reach this threshold in C2. The picture given in illustration illustrate the difference with other countries' technical definition of forest. In Indonesia, we have physical condition and legal condition of forest. Forest as physical conditional condition refer to forested area then forest as legal condition refer to area then being appointed and or enacted by government to be permanent forest. So we can clearly be seen on the picture not all forest area is forest and not forest area located on forest area. The National Forest Inventory and Monitoring System of Indonesia is part of forestry planning. Indonesia sustainably forest management is, go is govern governed by combination of environmental governance and carbon governance with the spirit that forest is for people. Justice and sustainable, there are there aspects of forest sustainability that consists of environmental sustainability, forest production sustainability, social cultural sustainability based on fair, just and transparent sustainability forest management consists of forestry planning, forest management, research and development, 
training and education and forestry supervision. The forest resource monitoring and inventory is impl implemented by Simontana as or NFMS system and SIGAP or all geospatial information infra infrastructure framework. Forest resource inventory and monitoring integrate terrestrial and remote sensing based forest inventory and monitoring have been developed since the 90s and improved by steep wise concept to meet our need. We collaborate our remote sensing based forest inventory with other stakeholders to make it more comprehensive and respect other stakeholder function and tasks. We use visual interpretation or products, the land cover data. It runs when our reg regional office staff that has the local knowledge about their area. I think I make use different with other. Based on this methodology, we can prove that our overall accuracy on forest and non-forest class is almost 98%. Our field-based National Forest Inventory, NFI, is being revised now. We collaborate with FAO to do it in 2025. We will conduct our NFI with hexagonal based sampling. Based, based in Simon, is the Simontana, we can see the history of Indonesian forest cover chain for 90s to 2023. We publish our data through website and mobile apps. There are three main features of web-based NFMS, which, which are maps, Statistic, statistic and data analysis, the mobile-based no, mobile NFMS is still being developed. Simontana provides series information that can be used by the user to evaluate their commodity based on location, printed map, and all statistics that produced by Simontana from various information available and the series of it also, the location of commodities area parameter to evaluate it. The feature I mentioned before can be accessed in map feature. On the left seat of the page, you can see list of layer that available in Simontana. On the top of the page, you can see the series of information. If you change to analysis, you will see option to upload or add another map truck WMS schema. We also publish the, area, the layer truck race EPI. This is the analysis result. You get statistic and our map as output. This data can use for your commodity evaluation. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for that really insightful presentation. Um, and yeah, if, remember, if you have any questions, remember to just jot them down and we'll go to Q&A at the end for all the presentations. Um, and now I'll pass on to hear a bit more from Brazil um, and Brazil's experiences on how forest monitoring data has supported public policies in the forest sector. So I'll pass to Alessandro. Hi, good, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. And I focus my presentation. I am from the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change. I'm in a sector that is responsible for um, the Red Plus uh, submissions for UN, UNFCCC. But I, I will tell you uh, about how Red Plus as a financial instrument made us think a little more about forest monitoring how data sets are usable or not usable at the moment of uh, Red Plus presentation. So, 
It's a quick presentation, but uh, I hope to see very deeper questions uh, uh, minutes from, from now. Um, how do I control? See? So Brazil is a big country with uh, more than uh, four, uh, 400 million. I don't know that this number is probably a little bit old from our last trail, but more than uh, 400 million hectares in native in, in forest, which made us uh, uh, choose uh, the Amazon as the first biome to uh, as a uh, uh, to present Red Plus, Frail, and Results, followed by Cerrado. Cerrado is a biome that is uh, has lots of forest, but also savanna-like vegetation. That went w uh, before the, the 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 step we are now with national. Uh, submission for Red Plus, so, okay. So for, for decades, Brazil uh, went under a policy of uh, occupy the Amazon, you have to deforestate to receive, uh, receive uh, uh, incentives. And that passed on to, uh, to the 80s, and a little bit uh, of that spirit through the 1990s. When we, all, we were already uh, living with a high rate of deforestation and fi forest fires that shocked the uh, international and national society, uh, so much degradation and destruction, so we had uh, uh, to come with a solution that provides not only a monitoring of forest, but also an uh, official number of how much Brazil lost, loses uh, every year of the Amazon. So when, when it came to 1988, the PRODIS is a system for deforestation. It came from project of deforestation in Amazon, how something like that uh, was created, mainly to uh, monitor the clear-cut vegetation uh, force loss. Yeah. Despite this, with annual data from PRODIS, with an open methodology, uh, we had uh, as a forest policy, some challenges to, to pass through the 90s and early 2000s. As we see here, the numbers are very small, but we are, do we have a point here, a pointer, no one? Okay, we have two peaks here in 1980, 1995, and 2004, almost uh, 30,000 uh, kilometers of Amazon lost by clear cut to visit uh, deforestation. Then we, in 2004, we, we came to a, a political um, arrangement to make a plan to halt the deforestation, and it worked uh, very much for from 10 years. Uh, which was the, 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 sim, the, the little seed for Red Plus in, as an intention. Uh, but before that, before that, we had a, a very complex uh, pool of products of monitoring. We had uh, INPI as a main um, institution that provided uh, the activity data for forest emissions, for example. We had uh, produce as an early uh, product of uh, monitoring. We had uh, a progress, progressive and uh, uh, in development, and later uh, a developed in a national forest inventory. 
and the, the mapping of uh, deforestation was not enough because we had to uh, subside uh, our uh, surveillance uh, teams with fresher data and uh, much more frequent. So we had to make a system like the TER. The TER is a uh, early alert of, of deforestation. Yeah. So we had also um, a monitoring of other biomes a little bit later, maybe something like 2015, uh, going to Amazon also for Cerrado, which makes Amazon but, uh, plus Cerrado makes almost 80% of the forest emissions. So made, made totally sense. Uh, which led to our first technical assessment of frails and a technical, I forgot the technical assessment for frail, a technical uh, analysis for BURs, for, for the Red Plus Annex. So we have a, a series of questions for outside the, not only the, the, our sector, but for, for our country, why did why you to choose that? Why do you, you don't have that uh, ear or that data set on your submission? It made us think what we need from forest monitoring. And until now, uh, uh, to now is a very important question. For example, for, uh, for our pol public policies, uh, losses of forest is important, very clear in the Amazon. But in Cerrado, we have other vegetation types that are not forested because, uh, by the definition of fowl. But for us, it's very important to, to, to prevent the loss of natural native uh, habitats. So uh, we use the definition of forest for the national inventory for uh, uh, the GAG uh, inventory for Red Plus, but for our domestic policies, deforestation is conversion. We may simplify as that. Oh, is that? And how do we get uh, now answering the questions? I talked uh, for context, but how we get an operational uh, monitoring system? We have to. Uh, pay attention to data and information demands arising for the public, for ourselves making uh, Red Plus submissions, but also for uh, academics and uh, education and other uses of the data. We don't want to be, to make a factory of Red Plus ready data for force. Must be a little bit broader. Uh, and recognize uh, a very important lesson learned. The best, uh, uh, the best science for the data may be very beautiful, very shiny, but sometimes is not as uh, broad in the territory or replicable or frequent as we, we, we want for a public, public policy for force. Mm -hmm. Uh, sustainable money. <laughs> we have to get access ready, uh, but not money only. The conditional conditions to uh, access various types of finance, uh, making the, the data uh, produced for Red Plus, for example, be uh, usable for smaller territories or in a, in, a, in a frame that is usable for other policies that are not for forests at all as uh, data for the uh, Convention of Biodiversity, for example. The, the more usable the data, better for sustainability, non, not only in a, a, a financial aspect. And for, for last but not least, impactful, we have to
talk a little uh, bit uh, about how how our our governances can extract the, the usability of the data. Uh, impact of success, successful monitoring comes from a meeting or as much as possible of different needs, interests, and curiosities about our forests. And it also comes from a accessibility of data and information moving away uh, for only the strict academicism and closer to what society wants. For us, uh, policymakers, it's important to have data as soon as possible or as easy as possible, but sometimes we have to make concessions to have information uh, circulating a little more. I think that's it. Thank you for the patience for my English, but that's it. Thanks, Alessandro. That was really, really interesting. Um, and yeah, reflections on kind of harmonizing across the different needs of a national forest monitoring system is um, what we're hopefully going to be speaking about a lot over this week as well. Um, so next up, we're going to hear from Guatemala. Um, and Guatemala's country-led planning um, in action. I think we'll be hearing from Tony Leal. So I'll pass the... Thanks. Good evening to each one of you. I'm from the National Forest Institute. I'm representing Guatemala today. And I see many sleepy faces out there. I'm sure that it's just the postprandial slump. But um, I know that uh, it can be a little bit late in the day, these things. But um, we'll get there. Let's see if we can bring this beautiful uh, and enriching process to a conclusion. So before I start, my colleague, who is here, is going to say a few words. I'm from the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Food, and I would like to share with you what Guatemala is all about. In our native tongue, Guatemala means a place with forests or many, many trees. That's what it literally means. Gracias, Oscar. Thank you, Oscar. As you know, so Guatemala from its roots and knowing what it means now, a place with many, many trees or a land of trees, this means that it's essential to look after such a wonderful place. There are so many diverse areas, both in terms of fauna and flora in Guatemala. And so we wanted to talk to you about this in conjunction with our presentation. So why did Guatemala decide to join the CLP process? Firstly, I would like to uh, congratulate Indonesia because they have a monitoring process in place already. And this is where we want to get to in Guatemala. But right now, we're somewhere in, be in between. The stage that we're at at the moment is one of uh, training. And for example, one of the reasons that led Guatemala to sign up to this process was that it was because of the needs that we had. We needed to have reliable data and continuous data as well relating to the forestry dynamics and coverage in our country and also defining a criteria between the different institutions as well. That also has to do with the, the environment or agriculture. And we have the Man Ministry for Livestock Farming and Arable Farming. We have the National Forestry Institute as well. And we also have the National Council for Protected Areas as well. But each one of these institutions has its own instruments. And what we were seeking was to have some sort of harmonization here across the different institutions and criteria so that there could be better coordination for a forest monitoring system. We also have to recognize that prior to this, as a country, we were making efforts 
For example, we had two national forestry inventories. One of them dates back to 2003, and this year we're going to be presenting the second national forestry inventory. After over 20 years, Guatemala will have this other forest-related instrument in place, and I think it's very, it's we, we really need to look at the the condition of our forestry as well. We also have carbon inventories. We're also updating forest coverage statistics and looking at uh, land use maps as well. So what achievements have, have we seen up to now whilst implementing the CLP in Guatemala? Well, one of them is that through in, throughout the CLP process, Guatemala has been increasing the number of spaces that we have that bring institutions together. As I mentioned, each institution has its own way of going about planning and also they work according to their own objectives as well. So the aim of the CLP was to achieve coordination between the different institutions. Another achievement that we've seen has to do with the legal analysis that has been carried out as well. This has made it easier to evaluate key aspects for improving inter-institutional coordination. It might seem easy, but coordination between institutions with all with their different agendas can be very difficult at times. And also looking at the legal framework of an in institution is essential in this sense. Something also to conclude, there's a new agreement that we have in place uh, called uh, GIMBUT. This is the inter-institutional group for forestry monitoring and land use monitoring. And the aim of GIMBUT is to look at the legal aspects, the financial viability as well of having an institution that it, that leads, that heads up this monitoring. There are challenges as well, and these are the main challenges that we've come up against in Guatemala. One of them is institutionalizing the national forest monitoring system paving the way together, involving all stakeholders, anyone interested as well, and also looking at financial sustainability. We've also found it difficult to guarantee uh, adequate bench, uh, uh, earmarking of resources as well, and uh, human resources as well as financial resources for each institution. Another challenge has to do with planning, planning investments in development and technological capability and also inter-institutional support. This is very important because each institution has a number of criteria in place that have to be respected. And the national uh, forest monitoring system has to take this into account if it is if it is to be successful. Last but not least, there's international support as well. This has also proven a challenge. One of the objectives here is to ensure that ultimately the country can fly solo and can work alone with its own resources. But at the time being, Guatemala is very much involved in this in this process. And one challenge is to continue uh, to benefit from this financial support. And also, Guatemala has a, a, has pledged to be more transparent in how it uses its resources. So these are the key challenges that we're facing when it comes to the CLP in Guatemala and also what we've achieved with the CLP during the course of its implementation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tony, for those really interesting perspectives as well. Um, so we now have some time for Q&A, um, which is great. We have Lots of time, actually. Um, but just before we do go into audience um, questions, so everyone prepare your questions, um, I firstly wanted to pass to Gabby to speak a little bit more about um, how CLP is able to kind of tailor the process and tailor the approach to the different contexts that forest countries are facing. Um, so we've heard, you know, we've heard there's just so many different um, approaches that countries are taking, like even things with forest definition. So yeah, how, how have things been um, on the CLP side? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Fiona. Well, um, eh, voy a hablar en español. Buenas tardes con todos. Muchas gracias por estar todavía despiertos aquí. Here and being awake. So the CLP process for us 
is a process that is not rigid as such. It's not a standard process. Each country is responsible for putting in place its own process. They define it, they create it, and they adapt it as well in line with their priorities and the commitments that they have at international level as well, as well as their national commitments as well. Uh, the challenges that each country faces and also considering the political context too, and the legal framework, the technical capabilities involved at every stage and also institutional capacity. So this focus, as we've seen with other countries that have had the opportunity to be represented here, we are showing that this is effective. There are some countries that prioritize development and they share their forestry monitoring systems with us. Others are spending time on evaluating their legal frameworks, first and foremost, or they're bolstering the, uh, the legal system. Governance is uh, important here of their systems. And also, they're trying to promote intra-institutional or inter-institutional cooperation. I believe Tony mentioned this as well, about keeping an open line of dialogue between institutions or between different stakeholders who all make up this system. That's fundamental because in many cases, monitoring in different countries is shared across different institutions or different bodies belonging to different institutions. But as was mentioned previously, at times, there are certain, there are, they have their own objectives that they're working towards. They have their own uh, HR resources, financial resources as well, that might not be managed in an optimal way. Countries have recognized that this leads to difficulties when it comes to decision making, making clear and effective decisions about their forests and also how you uh, monitor the progress um, when it comes to objectives or the means that uh, have to be to be used. So CLP is there to support countries in capacity building with institutions in also bringing in line technical support as well, creating a, a strategy or at least assisting in that process of coming up with a, a strategy in places where a strategy might not exist. The roadmaps that have been created as well to improve these systems are important and many countries already have these and have been working on them as part of other processes or roadmaps have yet to be created which will help in ensuring that their systems are more sustainable or evaluating results that we've seen up to now feeding that back because the institutions, uh, once again, will, will benefit from seeing these activities carried out uh, by in each institution in different territories. So the CLP offers support there, supports institutions when it comes to drawing up their own planning and carrying out the activities uh, that are part of their system. It's also it's a, a circular effort. Each year we're feeding back from the ground what the positive experiences over the year have been, etc. That's the hope anyway. And uh, we're seeing that in many cases it works, but it's very important to have that dialogue with the countries. CLP goes hand in hand with many uh, initiatives that are already in place in systems that countries have been working on to strengthen their systems. And we're also considering people as well, those who might want to be part of this uh, CLP initiative. They are warmly encouraged to do so. We have uh, an open mind. As I said, every country is playing a leading role, and so there is some flexibility in this initiative. It's not rigid. Uh, what we're seeking to do is to respond to the real needs, the specific needs of each individual country as they move towards uh, a functional system, which is sustainable as well, which meets the needs. Not only the external needs, it's very important to bear that in mind as well, but especially the domestic needs of the country as well, so that it uh, responds to the needs they have in their countries. And I think that's uh, everything I wanted to tell you. And thank you very much again for giving me the floor.
Thanks, Gabby. Um, that was really interesting. And I think it's very exciting for the CLP process because I guess we're just at the very start of it. Um, and every year, you know, there's more lessons to be learned and there's more country sharing opportunities. So, yeah, really looking forward to see how the next few years of CLP also um, pans out. Um, so we have uh, just under half an hour for Q&A, panel discussion, an opportunity for anyone to ask any questions. So I'll just take two from the audience and then we'll see if there's anyone online that also wants to ask any questions. Um, yeah, any, any, any questions from the audience? Um, yes, go, yeah, go ahead. Oh, and please, could you let us know who you are, where you're from, and who you're asking the question to? Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Carlos Riaño. I'm from Colombia, but I'm from the well, working with the European Forest Institute. So thank you very much to everyone in, in the panel. Um, this is uncommon to have Indonesia and Brazil sitting in the same panel. Uh, well, congratulations to GFOI to, 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 to put them together. So this is, I think, a question for, for both of them, but also, um, I think, for, for our colleagues from uh, Guatemala. Uh, both countries, or all the three countries, you, you have an, uh, an strong component um, on forest, right? So Indonesia, Brazil, I think if there is someone from, from Congo, and then we have the three, the, the main three countries uh, uh, with forest. But at the same time, you are the main commodities producers, and what we are here today is not only about uh, uh, MRV and, uh, um, and CLP, but also about transparency in the commodity supply. So could you elaborate a little more on how you are also supporting uh, the private sector to comply with the, the other regulations that are coming or what that are, ex that are here? Um, is it possible for other people that is not part of the government to access the data, how they can do it, um, what, how you also support or, or work with, with the uh, other actors that are not part of the government or civil society? Thank you. Thanks. Um, we'll take, if there's any other question, we'll collect, yeah, we'll collect one more. Go ahead. Hi, this is uh, Ben Vickers from GCF. Uh, just uh, want to come back to Pierre. Is it Pierre? Uh, hi. Um, you mentioned uh, Article 6.4 in your presentation and the potential for, for REP Plus credit to be used in 6.4 transactions. Um, what about 6.2? The decision was made there as well. My understanding is that some countries are already investigating the potential to use REP Plus credits in ITMO transactions. Um, have you... Uh, any updates from your side about that? Thanks. Oh, by the way, one more thing. Yeah, I managed to get a panel last week in Baku with Indonesia and Brazil on it as well. Just want to mention that. Thanks. Um, okay, great. So who would like to go first? Alessandro or Divi, you want to go first? Yes. Yeah. great. Okay. We can assure that uh, you that our data is rigorously maintained and addressed to strict regulation, include techno technical standard for geospatial data libraries, sharing and data standard as outlined in Ministry of Environment and Forestry Degrees, degrees 398 and 40, 400 of 2021, this technical standard or detailed guidance based on higher level regulation such as ministry regulation number 24 or 2021, government regulation number 45 of 2021 and law number 4 of 2011 on geospatial information. We implement this robust government stroke or geospatial information system. We call in CGAP, which has been re recognized with various 
Geospatial Award. We also share our data as trace API, so I could be used as map layer in other web map or web use platform. Thank you. Yeah, Alessandro, you want to compliment from the Brazil side? Yes, from Brazil. Uh, Ms. Minister of Agriculture, you want to jump in or not? Any answer about traceability? Because uh, my, my uh, perspective is from a sector that deals with the, the plan for halting deforestation in the Amazon and other biomes. Uh, many of those solutions are in development. And so I don't have the later more uh, stru structured uh, answer for that. I may uh, bring any um, incorrect information, you know. But there are uh, tentatives to, to make uh, traceability uh, uh, become more clear. And uh, many, many uh, actors answer that for us as well, because it's, it's an incongruency in the in the in our pledges to make uh, more results on forests and losing forests for another end of the you know another policy strong national policy so that's a big question and I don't don't have the more more important data for that sorry yeah go ahead Remy just like to mention on the, on the Brazil case tomorrow, there's a presentation by Karina Saraiva uh, on uh, Agro-Brazil plus Sustentável that should answer part of the question from Carlos. Yes, exactly. So we'll have an opportunity to um, hear more tomorrow and throughout the week from, um, from countries on that. Um, Pierre, over to you. Yeah, so I have not supported directly the last uh, final steps of Article 6.2 discussion last week, but just uh, flagging in answer to that question that Article 6.4 is a specific case of uh, it most right under Article 6.2, so clearly what is open under Article 6.4 is possible under 6.2. Great, thanks. Um, so we have also a couple questions from online participants. Um, they're, they're both for Brazil and Indonesia. So before we maybe um, come back to you two, um, I, I think I'd also like to ask um, Guatemala a question. Um, and this was um, perhaps something that um, Tony or Oscar can, can respond to. But, um, in thinking about kind of what is key for successful implementation for the CLP, what would be some of the key factors that you would say um, are prominent for ensuring that process in, in Guatemala? Sí, muchas gracias. Thank you. A través del CLP. Now, in our case, the country was able to identify actors such as the government, in this case, the Ministry for Agriculture, the Environment Ministry, also the public sector, and the academy. So through the whole process, the CLP process, Local communities in the country were also able to participate to establish alliances and inter-institutional coordination. Thanks, Oscar. Um, that's really helpful. Um, so a question from our online participant, um, which is for our Indonesian um, colleague, Devi, um, is what is the relationship between the Red Plus safeguards information system and the National Forest Monitoring System within Indonesia? Yeah. 
Yeah, so the question is um, on what the relationship between the Red Plus Safeguards information system is and the National Forest Monitoring System within Indonesia. Yeah, could we um, connect with someone online to speak to this potentially? There's a, a, an engineer Faisan's online. Yeah, potentially, but if not, yeah, no, don't worry. Um, we'll see if we can get that working. Um, but in the meantime, there's also a question for Alessandro, um, which is around kind of long-term development of national forest monitoring systems. Um, and it relates to um, how you build institutional, technical, and financial capacity to sustain the NFMS in the long term. And you spoke a bit about this in your presentation, but I wondered if you could go any deeper into kind of how the data has been used to support climate and forest policy making just for achieving the country's longer term, longer term goals. Yeah, I think uh, I try to explain a little in my presentation, but uh, the demands for data, for <clears throat> forest data in the field uh, changed a little from opportunity to opportunity to a submissions, be it a, a national communication or a submission for Brazil pres particip participation in AFRA, we have to make a better assessment and better, uh, faster, may, um, with newer data for uh, uh, structure that submission, that technical document. And uh, the governance in each uh, of those uh, boxes in the government, the governance uh, it uh, has always evolved from the 2000s to now. So we have now uh, always a participant in the climate policy in contact with the, uh, the sector for national uh, forest inventory, for example. For years we had something, some, someone from the Minister of Environment, participation in capacitations, in, in opportunities to decide some, some kind of information, as well as in, uh, uh, actors from uh, a broader range of, uh, of the society, um, more from the academic side, more from civil society, uh, speaking of safeguards, uh, more of indigenous peoples, local communities, participation in instances that are, were a few years earlier, uh, mainly technical from the MRV uh, realm. Now, now we have uh, uh, people that are from different boxes. Mm, there's more cross-pollination, we have to use a biology term. Now, and, and then we have a, a, a data that is more richer or more aligned to the different uh, proper, uh, uh, different um, necessities for forest data. No? And we optimized a little bit more the uses of resources we made more uh, in in in, uh, in cooperation um, moments of discussion that's why great thanks so much for answering that question um so we can actually hear from someone online which is great um so Mr. Faizan, I think, is available to respond to the question um, posed to Indonesia on the Red Plus Safeguards Information System and the National Forest Monitoring System. If we can connect. Can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, <laughs> delve deeper into Indonesia's specific or into 
GDPR, but uh, the national forest monitoring system is our system that we default to primary credit to fulfill domestic domestic level mandates. And the other uh, question about the RETG plus support information system, uh, our national forest monitoring National Forest Monitoring System or Simultana is produced a lot of data such as deforestation, reforestation, and deforestation. And we provide the data and maybe use now fully use. We provide the data. If it be used, it can be used. Maybe the uh, our answer first. But if I have another answer that more clear, I will be that. Thanks, Fuerza. I think you're breaking up a tiny bit at the end there. Um, but thank you for coming in on that. Um, any more questions from the room? Yes, go ahead. Eh, hola, buenas. Sí, yo soy Guillermo Carnicero. Guillermo Carnicero. I'm an economist from the British government, and I'd like to ask the Guatemalan colleagues in particular. You were saying how the CLP process has facilitated coordination among different institutes, the Ministry of Agriculture and Environment. And I was wondering about the extent to which there might be different objectives and how the CLP process was essential when it came to maximizing synergies. I wonder if you could speak a little bit more about all of that, because I'm interested in the type of differences in terms of mandate that there might be between the different organizations and how the CLP was used to harmonize all of that and establish a focal point upon which to establish the national system. Thank you. Gracias. Yes, thank you. The Agriculture and Livestock Ministry and the uh, National Institute for Forests as well, and that's what's responsible for managing uh, the forests in Guatemala outside protective areas. Then there's the CONAP for protected areas that manages the forests within the protected areas. So those are two sister institutions, if you like. One governs everything outside protected areas, and the other one governs everything that's inside the protected areas. And then we've got the MARM, which is the Environment and Natural Resources Ministry. Now, each of those bodies has its own agenda and its own planning, its own resources, and, of course, its own objectives. The MAGA, for example, has maps for land use or for types of land, then the INAF has maps of forest cover and forest dynamics outside protected areas, and then the CONAP has all of that for within the protected areas, and then the MARM has maps above all for variations or changes in land use. So each of the different institutes is responsible for different maps. And what the CLP process did was that with those four institutions, it made it possible for all of them to contribute something. And the CLP process unified and harmonized all of the tools and information provided by each different ministry and placed it in a single location, thus helping to compile data, but also ensuring continuity. And this is extremely important because the compilation of, of all of the data is not just to keep it all stored there, but it's to ensure that the country can make use of the data to draw up policies or for policy planning, also for agreements or development objectives. 
because countries are requested to establish development objectives, but this all made it possible to unify this, and it helps with the provision of information that then makes it possible to achieve those objectives. It also makes it possible to make sure that the data is transparent. Thanks. Thanks for that question and for that um, really insightful response. Um, so we probably have time for one more question, maybe two, if there are any more in the room. Yes, go ahead. Then. Thank you. And thank you for very interesting presentations and interventions. It's been really a joy to listen to. I have a question related uh, to um, our colleagues from Brazil, Indonesia, and perhaps also Guatemala, if, if you care to answer, though it does sort of touch upon the question that you just received. Because I, th I think we're somewhat in a situation where we're really asking a lot of the national forest monitoring systems. We ask them to deliver data on what's happening to the forest to, as the basis for policy uh, development to uh, assess and evaluate the effect of our policies. We're asking them to deliver data for international financing, perhaps some, in some cases for law enforcement, um, for com communication, political communication, and in some instances also related to nature, uh, CBD, but also value chains. So I think there's a lot of asks. And I'm not sure that in all political contexts it makes sense to include all these asks in one single institution, but that will depend on, on the circumstances. So I'm a little bit curious if, if you'd like to share some reflections on any discussions you had related to this in your context, um, and, and what are the pros and cons of including all these different aspects in sort of one institutional framework? And just to add one final um, ingredient into that pot is the um, surveillance of agricultural areas, which I think is, is very um, much relevant as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> yes, a lot of questions. And I think uh, some of them are not naturally produced in the same rhythm. Uh, as we think in a, a national inventor for GAG, G, -A -G we have uh, photos né? from a context in 2005, 2010, 15, etc. For Red Plus, we have to uh, think in an annual basis and other activities and emissions and remotion, rem removals. So uh, some of those answers uh, it's better to be uh, separated in locus in the in the government and in the the, the, um, the reports that we we share with society or international society or financiers uh, because uh, our treatments to those data, uh, th those uh, uh, informations, data informations, and uh, now uh, as a learned lesson from safeguards for Red Plus, how we communicate the data is very important. We have to bring together the indigenous people and com local communities and a plot, a very complete platform does not communicate what we want. So uh, to let them uh, be as participative and pro uh, have the protagonism, in the decisions influencing the governance, forest governance, we have to communicate better. So uh, the, the uh, rhythm uh, we yield that information is not the same. So I don't think a huge platform would answer everything. I have to, in the opposite, we are aiming, Brazil is aiming to uh, defragmentate some of those data uh, to uh, the audiences, audiences that need certain information from the forests. I hope that helps. Thanks, Alessandro. Um, 
Devi, do you want to answer this? Um, I'm not sure if you're still connected, but um, yeah, maybe all Guatemalan colleagues. Um, but if not, we are up to time at the moment anyway. Um, and I just wanted to thank the panelists um, and thank everyone for staying with us. Um, we're going to also have some closing remarks and also a group photo, so please stick around. Um, and yeah, I think just uh, to reflect on the multitudes of different contexts and complexities that people on the pan panel have shared today. And also I think it was Alessandro who said curiosity, so I do encourage everyone to be curious this week um, and to engage and connect with everyone else. Um, and yeah, just a, a big thanks to, to everyone. Wonderful, thank you Fiona and, and the panel. Um, so as Fiona said, now is the time for the group photo. So while you all take a few moments to adjust your hair and maybe fix your eyebrows, um, we're gonna take the photo up here. So in a second, I'll ask you all to come up, but just wanted to thank um, all of our speakers from today. Um, and I encourage you all to treat this week as, as a gift. Um, this meeting, we had this week, we have no negotiating to do. We have no agreements to try and reach. We have no contracts to sign, no verification, no validation. We're here simply to share, to listen and to learn. And I think that really is a wonderful opportunity. Uh, many of the meetings we gather at, there's a hard deadline or a hard deliverable like our colleagues who have just come from COP. This week is relaxed. We're here to listen and learn from what our colleagues from all around the world are doing. There are about 150 people here spread across the three workshops um, with representatives from 18 uh, tropical forest countries. It is a fantastic opportunity to, to listen and to learn from one another. So I encourage you all to do that. Um, we will let you go after the photo to enjoy some of the eternal city. I hope it is clear what's planned for the rest of the week, but if anybody is at all uncertain, please feel free to reach out to Fiona, myself, or anyone else who's been moderating the sessions. We'll be able to help you out. But now is the exciting time for the photo. I'm not sure how strong this stage is. We might ask maybe one or two lines of people to come up behind us, and then everybody else to line, uh, to stand up in front, with obviously the tallest at the back and the less tall at the front. Not that I'm making any judgments on height. So if we can all um, come up quickly, take the photo, and then we'll let you return to your desks to, to gather your possessions. Thank you.